Howdy guys, Cub here. Welcome back to Hermitcraft. Last time we started the Demise minigame, and also this armor is way out of line. Get back to work, guy. What are you doing there? He doesn't even know what he's doing there. But yeah, we started the Demise minigame, which is why I am wearing some enchanted leather gear. Uh, you can see we don't have any protection or anything on this because we like to live dangerously. Um, but yeah, there's a couple hundred diamonds on the line for whoever dies last now, essentially. So... Yeah, we're going to try and outwit, outplay, and outlast the other Hermits in this Demise minigame. And we also got a Totem of Undying, and yeah, we're going to use this uh, to our advantage. Hopefully keep this on us so we don't die uh, by accident or anything. Um, so, today, what we're going to do, we're going to try and work a little bit on Concorp. Now, I want to be careful here because I don't have my Feather Falling Diamond Boots anymore. We just got these, <laughs> which don't really do a whole lot in terms of negating fall damage. So I'm going to make sure we don't die here. When we fall down, okay, we're good. It takes about four hearts of damage, so we don't even need the Totem of Undying, really, if we're, if we're honest with ourselves right here. But, yeah, just wanted to make sure I didn't die falling down here with these boots on. <laughs> so, that is good to know that that is not the case. Um, but, yeah, today we're going to start to work on a couple of farms in this area. So, right now, we have this boardroom, right? So, this is the Concord boardroom. You can see a couple parrots hanging around here. Here's Captain Jack Sparrow right there. Uh, a few other parrots around here, uh, some of which have vacated their <laughs> their seats, apparently. Um, but, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to try and fill out the, the all the all the areas behind the doors of the boardroom here. So a lot of these doors on the ground level have tunnels behind them, so that's great. But the top doors, if I can just simply boost on up here, and be careful not to smash my head here, because if we die, we're out of the demise running for the diamonds. Uh, but these top doors, these mostly don't. These have pretty much just stone behind them. Initially, I was gonna connect these down to the bottom doors, but I think it would be a lot cooler if we decided to put farms behind uh, these doors here. So, right now I'm thinking we probably want maybe some chorus fruit farm action going on. I think a good spot to put that actually would be right over here. I'm being super cautious not to crash into stuff. I think over here would be a good spot to put the Chorus Fruit Farm, because this is the only door that both doesn't have a top bit and it doesn't have a bottom bit. And Chorus Fruit need a lot of room to grow vertically, so this would probably be a good spot to put a Chorus Fruit Farm. I'm also thinking maybe a Nether Wart Farm and a Cocoa Bean Farm would be good farms to put in these upper echelons of the, uh, the boardroom, so we might do that later on, but I think today we're going to focus mostly on the Chorus Fruit Farm. So I think the first thing we need to do today is we need to dig out a area behind this door right here. So I think the best way to do this would just be to basically get a beacon and place it down right here. Although, I'm pretty sure... I can't hear it right now, but I'm pretty sure above this spot is the lake. So it might also... Let's just leave a, uh, a torch here as well. So nothing bad spawns in there and kills us or something. Uh, but I think this also is where the lake is, if I'm not mistaken. So let's make our way out here. And yeah, there's our village right there. Yeah, this is where the lake is too. So we might need to dig down and actually get rid of the... the conduit down here, which I believe is like right under here. Yeah. So we're going to have to get rid of that conduit and move it somewhere else, because we're probably going to need some of the space down here for the top of the Chorus Fruit Farm. So, yeah, I'll move the conduit first, and then we'll start to dig with a beacon, so I'll be right back. Alright guys, so here's the plan for digging this area out. So, right now I have one hallway that we started here. It's going to go down in this direction. It's going to be two blocks wide, and then we're going to have sort of like a divider here. Probably this will be black stained glass, uh, black stained glass panes, I should say. Uh, and then we'll have another hallway here that's going to be three blocks wide. Uh, that's going to lead down this direction, and we'll have another dividing block here uh, that's going to go down like this. Uh, also, probably black stained glass panes. Then we're going to have a staircase down here, so we'll need another dividing block here going down like this. With this. I'm using iron blocks because that's what I got on me right now. Um, and then we're going to have a... So that means like right here, this block will be the start of a 31 by 31 area where we're going to make the chorus fruit farm. So it's going to be a huge area. 
And then we're going to also make it like 20 blocks tall because coarse fruit needs a lot of space to grow vertically. Uh, and so we're at 46 blocks right here. So I'm thinking... I'm thinking that... 20 blocks from here. Let's see, this would be 46, 47, 48. So this would be 48. So if we go down to like 28, 29, that height level, I think that would be good. So imagine us coming in at the corner of the room here, and we have a long hallway down here and here, and then a big room right in the middle. That's what it's going to be like. So yeah, that's the plan. So let's go ahead and dig it out. So just a very brief time lapse of me digging out the whole area here for the Chorus Fruit Farm. So I dig down basically two blocks at a time. And I try to keep everything as well lit as possible because we don't want creepers or anything surprising us and killing us and then we're out of the demise game because playing with leather armor, it's honestly a little bit, uh, little bit nerve-wracking, I guess. Um, and yeah, we also had to go repair our tools every once in a while, which is why sometimes I, I vanish from the, uh, the shot entirely. But for the most part, mobs weren't too bad. Uh, so yeah, just keeping on digging here. But then I found a cave that was totally full of mobs and right here i just want to show you guys this because i almost died here a couple times uh you can see hopefully the uh the replay mod actually shows oh it does not it does not show the uh the spectral uh effect on the mobs but i was shooting these guys with spectral arrows and there there were just more and more and more of them and you'll see here i actually take quite a bit of damage at some spots uh, I actually got down to like half a heart, so <laughs> we almost died right here uh, when it comes to the Demise minigame, but I'm sure many of you have had similar experiences where you basically just kill mobs and then more seem to come out of nowhere, and then more seem to come out of nowhere, and they just keep coming out of the darkness at you. It was sort of like that, but anyway, we persevered and we're actually able to slay all of them, and then we went through and basically lit up all of the tunnels around here, uh, all the caves and stuff, we lit those up with some torches so that nothing bad can spawn there. And so, yeah, eventually we, uh, we conquered and we got the whole thing dug out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we got ourselves an area now dug out here. So this is what it's looking like. As you can see, pretty big area, pretty big area. Uh, we also have a little staircase. It's going to be a one wide staircase here, but I think that's better than nothing. So we can get down here and replant uh, after we harvest the whole thing. Uh, so that's going to be going up right here where this uh, step staircase is right here. But eventually it will just be normal stairs. Uh, you can also see we ran into some caves. These caves did cause us a little bit of trouble, uh, as you might have seen earlier. And so, um, yeah, we actually have another spot down here that is a little bit, a little bit harrowing. Let me see if I can just make my way in here. There's probably, yeah, there's a lot of zombies, skeletons and stuff down there. I don't want to go down there too far, just because, yeah, it can be kind of rough fighting mobs because we only have leather armor on so <laughs> yeah we got to be super careful but luckily we were able to, to like light up all these caves here and so yeah everything is pretty good here I'm just gonna essentially like lock these off I think for right now just so nothing bad can sneak up on us for whatever reason there we go perfect okay all right <laughs> and then we're, we're probably gonna just go ahead and fill in this cave down here because this cave, I thought it was going to be a bad cave, but it turns out this is all it is. So I'll probably just like fill in all this stuff down here. So with the caves now covered up or filled in, we now are ready to focus up on the Chorus Fruit Farm itself. So the idea with this Chorus Fruit Farm is we want to basically have four water sources, one in each corner, currently represented by these gold ore blocks uh, that we have in each and every corner. And basically, these ore blocks, which are actually going to be... Uh, water sources are going to be basically controlled by dispensers that are going to be in the wall here. And so I want the dispensers to be attached to a lever that I can control from like up on the walkway or something. And then whenever we flick the lever, the water sources are going to be placed and then the water will start to flow. And the water should flow in such a way such that it basically pushes everything toward a central collection uh, point like right here or so. So we'll have like a hopper right here probably a couple blocks lower because we have to get the water sources to flow correctly uh, and so the way we do that is basically by you know counting out so here I have counted out one two three four five six seven and then the water is going to flow to an eighth block here but at that point it's going to fall down and then it can continue to flow for another uh, several blocks so that's basically how we're going to get the water sources to work I can sort of demonstrate this here if I get rid of this have a water bucket on me so we can just go ahead and place it down like this 
And so yeah, see it flows here, and then it's going to push everything that falls in here toward the middle. So I think the wise thing here is to go ahead and shape everything, make sure that the water flows correctly, and put down the lights, and then we can come back through with the end stone and put the end stone down here. I think that would be a good move. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so as you can see here, we have our water streams now down. Uh, we still need to put down the dispensers and stuff, but we have started to put down some end stone for the floor so we can actually plant down chorus fruit. Uh, and yeah, you can just see here, if I just toss in a couple items, let's just spray them about here. You can see them all going right down into the central area, and they will eventually go right to like the dead center. So yeah, they're actually like pretty much right in the dead center now. Yep, right in that center block there. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to see because, yeah, I think we're actually not going to use a hopper here. I think we're actually going to use, like, a fence here. So something like this. So that way we can drop the items down a block and then transport them, like, over this way, potentially. That could be pretty interesting. Um, so, yeah, that is the plan right here. So, yeah, it looks like the water stream has worked. So we're going to pick these back up with some buckets. We're also going to get rid of some of this... Excess stone, and there it goes, straight to the center. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this should work out quite nicely for us, so let's go ahead and pick up this water here. See it all goes away, <laughs> right there. Uh, and yeah, we'll go ahead and put down the rest of the end stone and start to work on the system to dispense the water and collect the items. All right, guys, check it out. So we got all the end stone down, all the sea lanterns are down, lighting up everything so there's no spawnable spaces, although... I have seen many slimes spawn down here. In fact, we got almost a stack of slime balls down here. So this could actually... Maybe if we put, like, some magma cubes here at the at the edges, it could work as a passive slime farm, perhaps. So that might be a thing we could do. Uh, but anyways, we also have the dispensers down with the water buckets. So this is what is going to control everything. You see we have a redstone line here. This leads down from a button up top. So you can see right here we just have a little... Redstone staircase pattern down with the torches and the redstone dust. So that's that. Uh, and then this redstone line goes to these two dispensers, that one and this one. And then the same on the other side with that one and that one. So this thing should be good to go. We should be ready to test this thing out. So let's go ahead and head on back up. Uh, let's actually fly on up if we can, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. All right. And yeah, you can see we also have a little bit of a thing right here. Uh, this basically, I'll just show you, has a water stream that leads up from the bottom. So underneath here, there's a water stream that goes down this way. And then it comes back up via a bubble column. And then we only have two hoppers in this entire farm. So I think that's pretty good. Um, so we'll just put this back up like this. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the button. See if it's working. There's the water coming out. Very good. Fantastic. You can see some items down there getting... Uh, taken in and let's just spew some down there there we go sweet and yeah they all make their way to the middle and they fall right down the hole and you know what i just realized i just realized i did not hook up the water stream down here dang it all right hang on let's uh <laughs> let's get this let's get this going that would probably be a good thing to set up also i don't want to go too quick here all right there we go okay so let's turn it off so the water stream does work and all the water should be going away here now. But, yeah. <laughs> all the items fell down, but I didn't actually push them over. So they're just going to stand here at the moment. Yeah, they should be going all into here. Underneath this, because we have a... I'll just break this and show you real quick. We have a water a water column right in here. And we pushed them all up. But, yeah. we got to have the water stream that pushes them over here, too. So, uh, yeah. Let's just go ahead and make that real quick. So... Let's see, we want to go, I guess we'll just make it in reverse. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, right here. Like that. And then we'll just have something like this. Yep, there we go. All right. And then, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, right here. Except, let's just split it up. Let's just go seven. There we go. And then we'll just do like this. And like this. And like that. Perfect. 
All right, so now let's make sure it, it, all the stuff makes it in. Toss a bunch of redstone torches down, and yeah, we should see that this eventually makes it all the way to the top. So let's just do this, do that. And yeah, that should be pretty much it, I think. Yeah, that should be pretty much it. So let's just go to the top. Make sure all those torches made it up. So we'll just fly on up like this. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's no good. What happened here? Oh, there's the torches. So it seemed like the torches and stuff made it up here, but they didn't go into the hopper for whatever reason. So if I throw items in here, it doesn't seem like... Are these going in? These go in, but then they get stuck here. Is, am I accidentally locking this via this bit right here? Oh, I am accidentally locking it. Whoops. Also a spooky noise. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. What, uh, what can I use that doesn't conduct power here? Or can I just get rid of this, honestly? I don't want to get rid of that. Okay. Good thing we had the undying totem on us. <laughs> oh, woo, man. Okay. Well, that was close. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, I should get another undying totem just in case something like that happens again. But man, yeah, that was uh, that was something. Okay, let's let's get out of here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's that's the problem though. So I gotta fix that problem. And yeah, um, shouldn't be too big of a problem to fix. I don't think. All I need is a something like a sea lantern. Actually, this would actually work. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that before, but whoo! Good thing I had that totem woman dying. Otherwise, we'd already be out of this demise mini game. Oh man. Okay, let me quickly fix this. Hopefully this time we will not fall to our death. There we go. Perfect. Okay, let's not fall there. Okay. Put that in there. Put this back. So it's like that. Put this stuff back like so. And now we should see the stuff come up. So there's nothing in there right now. Oh, there's a couple things in there right now. But if we get up here, now we'll throw in a whole stack of stone. Spread it around a little bit. Okay, stone's going in. And here it comes. Fantastic. Okay, that was the problem. It was being locked by the uh, the redstone behind there. So, that should work for us. We should get a whole stack of stone in here. Man, I'm a little bit shaken. I'm a little bit shaken, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> uh, did not expect to fall, die due to fall damage right there. Normally, it's a very easily survivable fall, but... In this case, I guess not. So there we go. 64 stone. All of our stone made it here. So fantastic. This thing works. Let's hit the button. Uh, I should probably use a wooden button here too, by the way, because it's kind of hard to see with the stone. But this all is going to change anyway. We're going to decorate this thing. There we go. There goes the water away. And it should totally dissipate at the bottom. Fantastic. Okay. Got a working system now. So now we want to focus a little bit more on decoration. And I have sort of a ambitious plan for the decoration here I'm thinking with this end stone what could look really cool we could have red sandstone around here and redstone sandstone variants I think that could look really really awesome so that's what we're gonna go for it's an unconventional choice but I think the red of the red sandstone and the yellow of the end stone will actually be a nice complement to one another so let me go and get another Totem of Undying. I'm going to go get some red sand, which I think we have a lot of. And uh, we're going to go ahead and decorate this farm area. Well, thank goodness for the spoils of war. We got plenty of Totems of Undying to use in this game. So we just got to make sure we're holding it. If we're not holding it, then could be bad times. Could be very bad times. But there's our spoils of war. We'll put those back in there. By the way, I just want to show you guys real quick. Uh, this is all the materials that we dug out. Uh, from the coarse fruit farm area. So all these stone and all this material here, this is what we got from 
that area. So quite a lot of material resources. And I'm actually going to dump off some right here. And we need to see if we got... Need to see if we got some red sandstone. I think we got a few blocks in here. And some red sand there. Okay. And then I think we have a ton... I think we have a ton over here. You can see I've also turned on all of our, all of our beacons to get speed and haste. Let's see if we got any in here. Should be some at least, I think. Another wreck. Red sand. Whoop, there were some. So we got one, two, three, four. So we got four chests of red sand at least. Not including any that might be in the back here. Yeah, five, six, seven. So yeah, we got seven. Shulker boxes of red sand, which might be enough, honestly. Uh, we got most of that during the construction of the golf course. That's where all this red sand came from. Um, but we're going to pull most of this out. Probably all this out, actually. That we have in here. And we're going to make this into red sandstone and also smooth red sandstone and chiseled red sandstone. Alright, guys. We made a little bit more progress on the decoration, but look at this! This guy is having the time of his life! Straight up climbing walls and stuff, it looks like, but I think he's just actually climbing the scaffolding. Because mobs can't actually climb scaffolding, this could actually be bad for us here. Oh no, he fell. He fell. We're fine. We're fine. But yeah, that was bizarre. Look over and seeing a slime climbing the scaffolding. I hope he doesn't come up from behind here, or from underneath, and knock us off. That could be bad, but luckily we still got our totem on us, so I think we should be okay. Anyways, progress is being made. It's starting to come together. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have had a casualty, but it was not of us. It was of our dearly beloved Silk Touch pick. The Silk Touch pick has fallen. I was trying to go a long time without repairing it because we got this mending armor on, which takes makes it take a little bit longer than normal. Um, so, yeah, I tried to extend the life of it, you know, go all the way down to the last couple of durability points, and I pushed it a little bit too far. So, yeah, that's the first casualty of this Demise minigame, <laughs> is actually our pick. But, yeah, we gotta come through here, we gotta put in the work to get a new pick, so we're gonna need Silk Touch. Although, I think I actually already have... hang on. Oh, it took the diamonds out already. Okay, well, whatever, we, we, can have, we can take this. We need Silk Touch, we need Mending, which I have. Uh, we need unbreaking. Uh, we need efficiency right here. Man, okay. Well, yeah, let me re-enchant another pick. I'm still working on that, as you can see from my inventory. we got a lot of red sandstone going down in there. So, looking forward to showing you guys the progress. Alright, so we got our pick back now. And we're going to name this Silk Touch. And we're also going to add in some symbols here. Because you can actually add in Unary... Uh, Symbols or Unicode symbols rather so yeah, we can like put like stars and stuff in there I could put there's even like some crazy ones like for instance. Let me show you one crazy one All right, check this out. Check this out. There's an umbrella <laughs> Silk touch there we go with umbrellas Silk touch with umbrellas. That's that's awesome But I think ultimately I'm gonna go with the triple integrals here on the sides It makes it look like the silk touch is sort of special in a way it's not just Silk Touch, it's Silk Touch. Much better, much better. So there we go, Silk Touch. And by the way, those Unicode symbols, those are a vanilla thing. I highly recommend you guys check those out, because you can put them on things like uh, banners and maps and stuff, so you can make some really cool stuff out of those Unicode symbols. But yeah, got a nice little enchanted tool name, which looks super cool. So that's that, anyways. Back down to it, and yeah, we're almost done with this project. Look at all those scaffolding being funneled right into the center. Wow, that was pretty cool. <laughs> that was really cool. I, I didn't think it would be that cool, but yeah. There they go. There's one that's left over, it looks like. Let's just drop on down. There we go. It's going in. I think that's everything, except for some of these on the side. Yep. Okay, and then... Yeah, once we get back up here, we should see the scaffolding starting to roll in up here. I'm thinking about getting rid of the staircase, by the way. Maybe just do a bubble column. Uh, but the only thing we have still to do is we just have to do the tunnels on the sides. And then this thing is done, we can actually plant our coarse fruit down. So let's go ahead and turn this off. 
And there's our scaffolding coming in. Very good. <laughs> Along with some other stone and some sugarcane stuff. So, yeah. Nearly done here. Let's go ahead and complete this farm. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, we got ourselves the Chorus Fruit Farm complete. Here is what it's looking like in its final version here. And, yeah, you can see we got this big column of sea lanterns in the center here. And that sea lantern light basically shines through that half slab gap. And, yeah, that helps to illuminate some of the Chorus flowers. Then we also have these. These are like big, uh, long, I want to say like ropes, rope type things. But they're just iron bars and some end rods as well as a lantern at the bottom. And those help to light up some of the uh, flowers on the sides. At least uh, most of the flowers on the sides. There's still some, I think, like, like these here that can actually still have mob spawn on them. But I'm not too concerned about just a couple of them. We got the majority of them now lit up. So... Uh, how do we use this farm now? That is the question. So, the way you use this farm, uh, I'm going to grab this bow. So, we got an infinity bow in here. I'm going to grab an arrow here, because I don't want to use uh, spectral arrows for this. And all we got to do is now just shoot off all the flowers here. So, we just have a nice gallery, shooting gallery down here, where we can just shoot down all of these. So, we just... Fire at will. This is a new mechanic in 114, by the way, if you're unaware of it. Uh, so, yeah, we just basically shoot all these down. And then, once we got them all done in this area, we can just make our way over to here. And shoot all these down. Alright, so then once you have shot down a bunch of flowers, or at least some flowers, you don't have to necessarily shoot down every single one. Uh, so, I think that's probably a pretty good amount Right there, there we go. Okay, so now, all we gotta do, come on over here, hit the button, and this should knock all the chorus flowers and all the chorus fruit into the center portion. And yeah, you can see what it looks like without... Look at that. <laughs> it looks like a little bug scurrying around there. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, all the stuff gets put into the, the middle now. You can see all the arrows we shot down, <laughs> down there. And we should see all the stuff, all the chorus fruit and all the chorus flowers coming right into here. And actually, we can actually see some of them back there as well, just floating in the corner of the block. Nice. And then after a little bit of time, and also I decided to get rid of one of the hoppers here so that all the stuff just immediately pops out here. We can just pick it up. Uh, so, yeah, we can just put it in the chest ourselves or pick it back up. Uh, all we got to do is then you know, take the chorus fruit out. So we got, you know, over nine stacks of chorus fruit right there. And then hit the button. And we can just jump on down in here. There we go. And then we just got to replant down here. Like so. And everything should start to regrow. And this is what it looks like from down here, by the way. So there we have it. All of our chorus fruit flowers have now been placed down. Or at least all I'm going to place down. And now we just exit out the side here. We got a little fence gate here. Uh, to prevent any mobs that would still somehow spawn on top of the chorus flowers from getting out and walking up the staircase. And so, yeah, all we got to do is just simply walk up here, and we're back on the top. And now we just wait for it to grow up and do the whole thing over again. So, that's basically how this chorus fruit farm works, and yeah, I think it works pretty well. Pretty neat little design. So anyways, guys, with this chorus fruit farm now complete, I think I'm going to have to call that an episode for today. Very lucky that we did not meet our demise today in this episode. Uh, very lucky we had the the totem of undying on us. And yeah, we'll try and keep a totem of undying on us to prevent our demise for as long as possible. But it is kind of rough with this leather armor. I'm kind of also regretting it because it makes it so that I have to wait a long time to repair our tools. Uh, <laughs> because these suck up all the, uh, the XP with the mending. Anyways... I think that's going to be it for me today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please do leave a like. Be sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next episode.